It's time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitary Mega Tournament. Uh, a while back, I, I revisited the mound with you all on camera and um, told you about how it was going to shortly be demolished. Well, lo, to have a little bit of a palindrome effect or a bit of a, a mirror effect, my son, the very next day, tore part, part, part of the mound and put it right there. Now you see um, how much I care about this front sidewalk. I left that there um, for now. I mean, we're going to continue to dismantle, though, dismantle things as we prepare to move. But I thought it made for a nice bit of symmetry with the uh, Pablo Origins game, wherein he was oftentimes seen destroying the mound. So a little bit, and he hasn't touched it since that day, and he hadn't touched it before that for months, which is why the mound was still intact. But he just decided one day to tear up the mound. So I thought you might like to take a look at kind of what this is looking like here. You see, I don't know what, um, Partially decomposed, oh look, there's some life in there. Partially decomposed grass looks like where you live. Uh, am I pointing at there? Yeah, you see that? There's some life. There's some life. We have gone quickly through the first three phases of the turn. Start Empire, the only surprise or only thing that happened there was a non happening. Runt opted not to start an empire. Uh, she, if you recall last time, had discarded the Papal States. There was a bit more of an incentive for her to discard them early because every turn she didn't have them maneuver, she was going to lose points, and it just kind of felt constraining for her. So she didn't start anything. Uh, maybe she didn't have anything, or maybe she just didn't like what she had. Production, um, we saw some buildup from the Ukrainians, which is good for Cowboy. He was able to double his income due to his brilliant financier, who... It's just able to do that once, and then they retire, which is good. You know, I mean, that's that's enough for a brilliant financier to do. They they need to be able to to do other things and not just be so defined by that job or that that task. Um, and then finally, we had a trade in progress, which was probably the biggest news, which I'm sure is going to grip your belly by um, by the lining and twist, because here we go. Big trade from the Portuguese here to the um, Germans this time. Uh, Flush just keeps trading with giraffe, or not, runs, sorry, runs different empires. He was trading with the Papal States. This time the Germans, he, he felt good about his trades before, and this trade went really well. She, she, ha she didn't really have a card to trade him, um, so she ended up rolling no dice. So he got a, you know, pretty much just a freebie on that. Um, but that did bring the Germans up. That that helps them in two ways. One, you know, that brings them close to this pitfall here, which is the cutoff point. Um, two, bringing the Germans up in age makes them, presumably, gives them more of an advantage against the Ukrainians, um, which is Cowboys, Cowboys Empire. Something of a subtle maneuver phase for how popular it was as an action. Three-fourths of our real people contestants have chosen at this phase. First was the Russians, um, sponsored by Giraffe. They were new last, last time. They popped up in Muscovy. Just for the record, they could have also popped up in the Ukraine, but she decided Muscovy was better for, for her actions. And she, she also um, kind of re-upped on that notion that she wasn't really in it to strike, um, at least not directly, at Cowboy. She could have put a lot of weight on him, and I don't think it was his production action that made her decide otherwise. She's figuring, you know, it's to get in a, a direct confrontation with him right now is not really in her best interest, and she feels a little bad for him. Um, though she maybe doesn't want to feel too bad, he's gaining on her. He's definitely he would he had been scoring more than she was. That might have changed now. Let's take a look at so she spread the Russians out. Here's the European line. So she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Europe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven Europe. So she actually has more of Europe now than him. So up point wise that's going to put him in second place so he's going to get two points both the russians and the ukrainians are going to get two points for for europe um she's also beginning her presence into asia with them and heading down towards india so that's nice she also sent dr hume up here and he he uh 
did a mission and was successful, which is her first her first point on the board um, for the the labyrinth this age. Um, the Germans also did a rather odd maneuver. Uh, they you know here here come these Ukrainians. They just spread themselves out. They they could could have bunched together for a stronger defense, but Runt decided to just spread out, which could pay off. She might get some more money that way. I think she might have also just been greedy. She saw the um, all the space opened up by the departing papal states and decided to just kind of spread down there and see what Cowboy does about it. Maybe she's hoping he'll get eliminated before he can do too much. And then finally the Japanese, they did a, a maneuver, just spread to another island, basically is what they did. And they also um, had two successes here. And I, I forgot to move these guys out of here. York and Sam, they both uh, were successful. So that that was that was kind of news because that tied up flush with Runt here. She's no longer going to be scoring an extra two points every turn for being in the lead on that that labyrinth. Um, and also gave flush two points in a time when that was pretty useful to have some points. So these guys got to go back. I think they're going to head to Szechuan. What I what I say is when they um, they can either fop or they can either get dismissed, which is the green arrows here, or banished, which is the red arrows. If they get dismissed, they can choose where they go in their um, empire. If they get banished, then I just put them somewhere disadvantageous. Really, you know, if you're playing this with actual people, which this game is unworkable <laughs> right now, as, as I, I don't have the rules written out enough to actually play this with humans. But if you were to play this with actual humans, uh, someone else would decide, right? There, there wouldn't be some, like... Uh, uber entity that's that's making choices like that. Civilized action. We are seeing the New World card played once more, and this explains why the Mongolians became Christian. It was so that the Pope could send them to uh, California, and the Rockies, and the Grand Canyon, and the Great Plains. Uh, and give them that land. He would not give it to them unless they converted first. And so they converted uh, in order to stymie the Portuguese somewhat. So, because they're, they're not going to get any points off of it, right? But it's kind of interesting having Mongolians sun, suddenly transported there. So, um, we're going to have a, a fight right here between this musket man, this Mongolian musket man, and this uh, Portuguese knight to see who gets to hold the Great Plains, which is a rather nice place for money. Um, so the Portuguese, they get five, and the musket men, they are going to add two, so they're gonna have a total of eight. Uh, Giraffe is using a stronger counter set with her Mongolians than Flush's um, Portuguese have, so they're naturally one better anyway. And then she also has a scientific advantage. Ooh, that's a lot of attack dice. Not oh, I didn't roll these yet, did I? I was gonna say not a lot of attack dice for giraffe. I suppose it's kind of random how they're put down because I'm not thinking about it. But it's nice to have that roll. It feels more official, doesn't it? Not a very good roll though for giraffe. Not at all, but well, this is this will be fun to see how this plays out because it's a little different. So here we have these three sixes of flushes all get defended by draft. So she has a more defensive army than he does, right? Because he's getting very little gain for all of his offense. Um, whereas her less offense, one gets canceled out by that, but then this one brings in three. So she actually brings in more than um, than than he does because she has a uh, better defense and he does not have as good of a defense. And the turn of civilized actions phases ends with Runt doing a little bit of egalitarian damage, equal damage, not necessarily equal, but a little bit of damage to each of her competitors. First she put a storm here which wiped out a boat in the Faroes and the Norwegian coast, one of which belonged to a uh, cowboy and the other cowboy's English and the other one uh, belonged to the Portuguese there after their little battle. I think that occurred last time or maybe the time before that. And then she did a thing where let, let her steal two cards from Giraffe and discard them at random. Which one of them Giraffe was really hoping to use, so she kind of messed her up that way. 
Um, and that's going to end up the turn. Actually, it's not, and this is, I'm glad I caught myself because I, I think I forgot to, I always forget to talk about the discarding of empires when that happens. That happened last time, and I, I think I forgot to even let you know this time that it did happen. Papal states were discarded at the end of last turn. In this turn, we're going to have to say goodbye to a long-running friend, um, if you can be friends with an empire. This empire has been around since ancient times really and here we are almost in the modern age I'm, I'm saying this is the modern age I don't know why gotta say it sometime right um, and so unfortunately they even their their vaunted like cultural superiority is no longer the case they are getting slapped around by the pharaonic Egyptians culturally their um, empire which spread oh, a little bit is no longer the strongest their scientific knowledge is no longer the most advanced and so cowboy has decided now that he's not really even scoring off of them uh, to say goodbye to his Phoenicians and so goodbye Phoenicians that's gonna give him a lot of money which he could use um, money is I, I always do this part of the game the seven wonders part like I'll do it tonight for the next turn um, I do it off camera so you don't see that part but uh, money is really important in getting the resources you need to put down cards, especially once, you know, if, if it's a newer empire, to, to kind of give them a boost, you got to have that money. Cowboy hasn't been too smart with his money. Um, well, nah, I wouldn't say that. He's been, he's, he's let it flow, so he's, he's been out and had to make some tough choices as a result, not being able to get some cards that he wanted as a result. That's not really why he's getting rid of the Phoenicians. They're just kind of a liability at this point, and he needs to pull something out of his hat soon, or else he will be gone. In the middle of scoring, I forgot a couple of things about the Mongolians that I thought I'd just pop in and let you know before I forget again. Um, Giraffe, she scored a point from taking that land from the Portuguese. And now I'm starting to remember partially why she went to the New World. Um, one, they're, they score on having space in the world. So going there actually, I mean, they could have done the same just by maneuvering in Northeast Asia, really. But going there um, gave her more points. And then she got a point for taking out the Portuguese. And that also moved uh, Flush back, his Portuguese back one. So he's going to have to get, if he wants to end... Um, this cycle of discardship this turn or next turn he's going to have to win the trade um, or else pull out some way to get two trades or whatever but I think those cards are in the discard pile right now I don't know if there are more um, so that's another thing about the Mongolians another thing bef while I'm thinking about it if someone adjacent to them an empire adjacent to them is discarded they get an additional point so they have you know they have some some scoring opportunities that aren't read uh, as readily apparent so they scored three this turn there they have the second most land spaces on the map second to the pharaonic egyptians um she could get rid of them then they would be a decent four scorer and then they could score even more by chipping away at other people so we have completed our scoring um both women is gender divided that is, that's noteworthy, I suppose. Um, both both Giraffe and Runt scored eight. So Runt's scoring went down. That makes sense. She has less empires now. Giraffe's scoring went up, which makes sense. She has more empires now. Um, I think she, did I score her right? I think so. And both of the gentlemen, they scored 11. So that's going to make for an interesting scoring situation with this whole race to the cutoff point here. I mean, Runt, we don't need to worry about. It's really between the three um, three others. Giraffe's in the lead, but she's scoring less than the other two. Flush is probably going to overtake her. The, the question is whether Cowboy can uh, by next turn or the turn after that. He has a turn maybe two, depending on what Flush does. Um, and, yeah, yeah, these guys aren't even on here anymore. Flush is the only person in the sixth age with his Portuguese. So that's where things look. Um, kind of a, 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 a quiet before the storm turn, I felt like. It was a lot of kind of preparation. There were some interesting things that happened, but um, no large conflicts, lots of like little snips and snaps and bites. And that's kind of how maybe maybe it's because of how I play or kind of how the game's been going overall, but there's been some bigger moves. Um, tough to see the Phoenicians go by, uh, go. I hope that's not like a 
foreshadowing for another departure to come. Uh, we'll see you next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament 7x7 Ages.